Hey cute people, let me apologize to you guys for the glare that you'll see in my glasses. I tried to do a little something to correct it, but it's not working. But I'll try not to keep you too long. This video really is about um, natural hair, my natural hair, and protein. And I just had to share with you guys because I know someone is either been through what I've gone through or going to get ready for something like this and you need to know just a little bit more. Today is Wednesday. Right now my hair is tied up because I have it twisted and perm rods on the ends of my hair. Um, I wore my hair out Wednesday and it felt great, it felt good, but Sunday I had a situation, yes, not even a situation, a situation that really had me in a tizzy. I wash my hair but prior to that I wanted to incorporate protein into my journey and I did a little research I've seen maybe one or two videos here a while ago on YouTube about protein overload and I kept hearing people talking about protein sensitivity and I kept saying what in the world could that be you know your hair is allergic to protein I didn't know what it meant but I found out I wanted to use protein in my hair. I had some protein um, sample products. I didn't really buy anything geared for protein usage or treatments, but I had some samples from um, Curl Kit, Curl Box. I figured I'll try them. I don't have them with me right this very minute, but I will insert pictures along the way. The first thing that I used in my hair was this leave-in conditioner. So that's what I used in my hair and the next day my hair felt, it wasn't dry, it wasn't brittle, but I could feel the build up because you know protein will build up on your hair um, and my hair felt really waxy, like a real waxy build up. I didn't really like it so the rest of the week what I did I made sure that I just did as much moisturizing as I could so every night I was doing something to my hair to give um, me some moisture which it did pretty good because like I said Sunday came and my hair felt really soft I really didn't want to wash my hair but I did now remember I only used the leave-in one time um, so that Sunday my hair felt so soft it felt really really great and I guess that was because of the moisturizing that I had done wash my hair and I used this product as my Deep conditioner. And let me tell you, was that a great big old mistake? Why? Because when I got ready to de detangle my hair and retwist it, if you know the process that I use, you know that I retwist my hair after I wash it um, in twist. And my hair was breaking like crazy. I saw a lot of little. Um, tight tight coils just break off so I figured it was at the end of my hair where it was breaking my hair looked and felt terrible I shouldn't say that that's not true it didn't feel terrible and I couldn't see so why did I say that but I guess I just want to emphasize that I was not happy and it just broke off like crazy I knew I wanted to cut my hair trim my hair dust my hair so I was doing it at the same time mm. luckily um and I had just got over my quote unquote hair depression so it was starting to feel better thickening up again because like I said I don't care about how long my hair is for me it's all about the density and the thickness and the fullness that's what I really love more than anything yes so when I realized I had all this breakage going on I knew I was in trouble now the first time that had happened to me I used this product Okay, so I used that product, and I didn't know why my hair was reacting that way. I kind of figured maybe that's what it was. You know, some protein in my hair wasn't reacting to my hair correctly. But one thing I'll tell you, listen to your hair. Your hair will tell you exactly what it needs, no more and no less. Now, if you're on your journey, this is the beginning, you're going to have to learn your hair. You can watch other people talk about their journey, but do remember, yours may not be like theirs, and theirs is not going to be like someone else's, which mine, for me, 
it's not like I see people using protein and don't have this problem. Now remember, my hair is in its natural state, so I haven't lost much protein. If you chemically treat your hair, you relax the permit, um, color it, you will lose some protein in your hair. And that's why you use the protein treatments because I used it when I was relaxed, no problem. That will build your hair up and give you more strength and manageability because you're breaking down the protein in your hair by using the chemicals. My hair is natural. I don't have any type of altering, chemical altering products in my hair. And I didn't know. So I'm telling you, pay attention to your hair. Now, what should you look for? Very simply, if your hair is wet or dry and you can grab your hair and it stretches because the protein will give you the elasticity, elasticity that you need. Yeah, I got to slow it down on that word. So if you can pull your hair and it stretches and it doesn't break, your hair most likely is fine. You don't need to do much. Whatever you are doing, continue to do. If you try to stretch your hair and it does stretch but it breaks, you most likely need some protein in your hair. Now remember I told you Sunday my hair felt great. I always run my hands through my hair and very rarely do I get breakage from doing that. I may get some shed hairs if I go through my hair but just running my fingers through it, I don't get a lot of breakage so that should have been my sign. But I didn't know. So hopefully I can help you not make the same mistake that I did. So when you hear people talking about sensitivity to protein, this is probably most likely what they mean. Now protein is in a lot of products. We know that, right? It's in a lot of products. You can even um, overload your hair with moisture. That's a whole nother video. I've never had that problem. Because the type of hair that I need, my hair needs moisture on top of moisture, 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 moisture. And I've been trying to do that. And when I do that, I get great benefits until I mess up my hair by doing something like this. But, again, it's a journey. I'm not afraid to experiment. But um, when I get damaged to my hair, then I get a little, you know, upset. Because I guess we all would. You want your hair to look good. But that's how you can tell. There are certain things I can do to try to get my hair back to that. So what I'm trying to do now is just moisturize my hair every single day. And I also have a Curie Do, which I never ever showed you guys. I won last year from Curie Do. Yes, I did. And I'll try to um, do something with it soon and show you guys how it works and you know, all that other stuff. But, you know, here in New York, it's really, really cloudy. It's only like, what, about 4 o'clock in the early afternoon. And look how dark it is. Because I didn't want to turn on the lights because it makes everything yellow. And, oh, I don't like that. So, I know. Okay, here I am. No glare, no glare. Sorry about the glare, though. But you have to just experiment with things. Like I said, when I, I have more hits than I do misses. So, I guess, you know... I'm, I'm doing okay. Most products that I use are pretty much great products that I like and haven't had a lot of problems with. The most that I can say is anything with protein, a protein-based product, like I said, if it's a keratin treatment, amino acids, whatever it is, anything based around protein, I'm not using it. A lot of products um, that we will use in our hair have protein in it. You know, if protein is like the fifth, sixth, seventh ingredient, that's okay because you're going to find a lot of products may have protein in it. And I guess with my hair, the products that I was using, my protein balance must have been okay. I didn't need any more. But I didn't know that. So now that I do, I just want to share that with you guys because you really want to take care of your hair. So I don't think you have to try to avoid proteins altogether. But if your hair, like I said, it stretches, it doesn't break. The, you know, it's, it's flexible, it, it moves with you, you can comb it, it'll snap right back, then you are fine. If you're not sure, just moisturize your hair. Because with, with moisture, you can never go wrong. You can over-moisturize your hair, but with moisture, you can never go wrong. I just wish that I had remembered that from when I used the um, first product, that spray. Because I like the spray, it smelled good, I sprayed it in my hair, but I noticed right away that it was not the product for me. So the thing that I just want to say is listen to your hair. Your hair will tell you, just like your body, your spirit will always tell you what it is you need more of, less of, or, or if you're on the right track. I was on the right track, but I didn't know that. So what I'm going to do, because I'm not going to make this video too long, but I am going to, in the next couple of 
days, maybe weeks for me, I'm going to show you some of the things that I'm going to do to try to get it back to where it needs to be. When this happened the first time, and I suspected this may be a problem um, with the protein, which was a while ago, I did a video showing you guys that I used some products from Shea Moisture, which did wonders for my hair one dish for my hair. I don't remember how long it took for the breakage to stop altogether, but at one point I was happy because it did stop. But I noticed um, when I wore my hair out on Monday, it was a little thin and I wasn't too happy with that. So I'm going to do some rectifying. And like I said, I'll show you what I'm going to be doing. But I just wanted to mention that to anyone who like me, um, likes to experiment, want to try new things. Um, just be careful. Listen to your hair. So I'm going to end this video now because um, I need to. And I just want to thank you guys for stopping by and watching this video. Hopefully I helped you with something. For me, I'm not into the science of hair. Like, um, it does take a lot to know what you should and shouldn't do. What you should and should avoid with your hair. But um, it doesn't take a very long time to know what's good for your hair. But you do need to pay attention to the products you use, when you use them, and um, what they're good for. Because it will help you in the long run. Right? So again, thank you for stopping by and watching this video. Thank you to all my new and old subscribers for giving me such great support. And I greatly appreciate that. So hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. And I want you to... Share and spread love. Tasty cold and red.